All right, so now we're going to get into the log equation. So now we're going to actually start off with something that's a log. So for example, um, let's say that we have the log of x plus 3, that's a 3, base 4, and that's going to equal 2. What you should recognize is that the variable is in the argument of the log. The only way to get the variable out of the argument of the log in this particular case is to change this to an exponential. So now we're going to go the other way around. So to solve this one, we're actually going to change logs into exponentials. And that's because the location of the variable dictates that we need to put this back into an exponential form in order to solve it. So remember the idea was that I'm going to take the base and I'm going to raise it to the answer over here. And that's going to give us set it equal to the argument. So what we're going to have is we're going to have 4 raised to the second power equals the argument x plus 3. And now we can go ahead and solve this. It's actually not that difficult to do. 4 squared is 16. And then to solve for x, all we have to do is subtract 3 on both sides. So we get that 13 equals x. Now with log equations, unlike the exponentials, you actually do need to check your answer because the biggest thing is, and you don't have to go through the entire process, but the biggest thing is when you take this value right here for x and you plug it back in to the original equation right there, it's got to create a log which is positive or non-zero. So when I plug 13 back in for x, I would get the log base 4 of 16, and that's okay because inside the parentheses there, it's a positive value. All right, let's do another example. We'll call this b, so we're going to have 3 natural log of 2x equals 12. So again, what you want to recognize here is that you've got a natural log equation. The variable is in the argument of the natural log, so that means we have to get it out of the argument. And the only way to do that is to uh, change it to an exponential. However, in this case, to change it to an exponential, we have to isolate the log first. Just like with the exponentials, if you can isolate the exponential equation, you need to isolate the log equation here first. So the first thing we have to do is divide both sides by 3 to get everything else away from the natural log. So we're going to have the natural log of 2x dividing both sides by 3 is going to give us 4 on the right-hand side. Now I've isolated the natural log uh, on the left-hand side. So now we can say, OK, remember that the base of a natural log is e. So it's going to be e raised to the fourth is going to give us 2x. So let's go ahead and write that. It'll be e to the fourth equals 2x. And now to go ahead and solve this thing for x, we simply divide both sides by 2. So we get e to the fourth divided by 2. That's x. Okay, that again, that's an exact answer. <clears throat> In this case, we could get a decimal approximation to this thing. I'm not going to worry about plugging it in, but this is the exact answer. So again, make sure you understand the exact answer as opposed to a decimal approximation. And again, what you would want to do is plug that back in, but if you plug that back in and multiply it by 2, you definitely get a positive value. So we're okay there. Okay, so let's do another log equation. And you'll notice a difference in this one. We've got the log of x base 2 plus the log of x minus 7, base 2, equals 3. And what you should notice here is that now I have two different logs. So I don't have just one log in here. So it would be actually impossible for us to isolate just one log here and have the other one not be attached to something else. So in order to do this, we have to try and condense this into one log, which is why we did all the work on condensing. We're going to take this information. We're going to pare it down to one log. I have the same base, so we can do that. So we're going to write this one as the log base 2. Now I'm condensing two logs, which are being added, which means I'm going to multiply the, um, the arguments together. So it'll be the log of x times x minus 7. And then I have condensed this thing down into one log. Okay, And yes, you could distribute the x through. We're going to have to do that eventually. So it doesn't matter which step you do that in, in this case. But now I've got it down to one log. The log is isolated. So now I'm going to change it to an exponential to solve. So it'll be 2 raised to the third 
equals this whole thing here. So we're going to have 2 to the third power equals x times x minus 7. Okay, on the left hand side, 2 to the third power is 8. On the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So we're going to get x squared minus 7x. Hopefully what you can see is now what we have is a quadratic equation which means I need to get one of these sides equal to zero, so let's subtract the eight on both sides to make it easy. So then we get x squared minus seven x minus eight on the right. Now we're gonna to have to factor this to solve. So if I factor, we're gonna get x and x, it looks like eight and one are gonna be my ways to get the seven, it's gonna to have to be a negative eight and a positive one. So that means that x is going to have to equal 8 from this one, or x is going to have to equal negative 1 from that one. Okay, so those are our possible solutions here. Now this is what I said. You have to take these values and you have to go back to the original and plug them in. If I were to take 8 and I were to plug it back in, if I put an 8 here, log of 8, that's positive, no problem. If I were to put an 8 here, log of 1, that's positive, no problem. 8 works. 8 is good assuming we did everything else correctly that is. Now let's take the negative 1. If I were to plug in negative 1 right there, oops, negative 1, there we go. If I were to take negative 1 and plug it in right there, I'm taking the log of negative 1. We can't do that. That's not allowed. This is not a solution. It actually does not work. It's what's called an extraneous solution. So really the only solution here is the x equals 8. That is my only solution to this equation. So you must go back and double check your answers just to make sure you're not going to end up taking the log of a negative or the log of zero. All right, our last example of log equations that we're going to do here is let's say we have the natural log of x plus 2 minus the natural log of 4x plus 3 equals the natural log of 1 over x. So I've got three different logs here. I wish I could say that I had one log equaling another log. That would make it a little bit easier, and we're going to get to that. Um, but I don't. I have a log minus a log equals a natural log. So what I really need to do here is I need to condense the left-hand side. Okay, I've got two natural logs being subtracted, so I can condense those into one natural log through division. So the one on here, x plus 2, goes on the top. The one that's being subtracted, the 4x plus 3, goes on the bottom. And then that equals the natural log of 1 over x. Very much like when we did the exponentials, I now have one log equaling another log. Okay, now that I've gotten it down to this, because the logs are equaling each other and they have the same base, they're both natural logs, so they have base of E, that means the arguments must be the same in order for this to be true. So I'm not crossing off the natural logs. Please don't do that. That's not mathematically what we're doing. We're just taking the two arguments and we're going to set those equal to each other and solve. So I'm going to have that x plus 2 over 4x plus 3 equals... 1 over x. Okay, and then the easiest way I think to solve this is we're probably going to cross multiply. So cross multiplying means I'm going to multiply these, whoops, I'm going to multiply these two things together and then I'm going to set that equal to what I get when I multiply those two things together. So the first one is x times x plus 2 and the right side is going to be 4x plus 3 times 1 but that's just 4x plus 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the left, and we're going to get x squared plus 2x equals 4x plus 3. Okay, this is now a quadratic because I've got the x squared as my highest power. I'm going to get everything um, to the left-hand side now so I can set it equal to 0. So I'm going to have x squared. If I subtract 4x on both sides, we're going to have minus 2x. If I subtract 3, we'll have minus 3, and then that's going to equal 0. So now we have to factor that, and we're going to get x minus 3 and x plus 1 equaling 0. So x is either going to equal 3 
or x is going to equal negative 1. And once again, we have to go back and check these answers. Now we got a lot of different things to plug it into. If I plug 3 in here, no problem, I get natural log of 5. If I plug 3 in here, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 more is still positive. There's no problem here. And if I plug a 3 in there, I get natural log of 1 third, still positive. That's good. 3 is a solution. If I were to go ahead, I'm going to use a different color here. If I were to go ahead and plug negative 1 in here, now just because the x is negative 1 doesn't mean it will not work. If I plug negative 1 in here, I'm going to get negative 1 plus 2, but that's 1. That's still positive on the inside, so that's okay. The next one, however, will give us a problem because I'm going to have 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4 plus 3, it's negative 1. I'm taking the natural log of negative 1 can't do it. And if I had plugged the negative 1 in here, I would get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So I'm still taking the natural log of a negative. So the last two would not work. So this one is extraneous. It is out. The solution to this is x equals 3.